So what are we up to? We are having a quick breakfast and then we are off to Beniscola. I'm, I'm... And also, right now, it's 6 o'clock in the morning, so right now our first episode is premiering on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> There is something magical about being underwater for sunrise. The surreal lighting and the golden sparkling on the water makes it a unique view of which we can't quite get enough. We got up ungodly early in the morning to leave Buriana and head up north back to Peniscola, which we have visited on our way down. We ended our shakedown cruise early because we were expecting a Tramontana blowing our way in the next couple of days. You're a wild one. Hey, what's up? We are um, on our way to Peniscola, about halfway there, still uh, 18 nautical miles to go. And we'll We're making good way actually, we're uh, averaging about five and a half knots upwind, which is not, not really bad. Yeah, you might think I'm sailing the Antarctica, but it's actually the Met Sea. We're still in Spain, but it's pretty cold. We have had a very mild winter here in Spain, not so much spring though. We were wearing all the warm clothes we own. So let's hope for a change in Tawiri Matea's mood. As soon as the sun was out though, the hoodies came off. Well, there's not a lot of wind today, so that's a perfect opportunity to try out our Chaniker. I'm really not sure if, uh, if this is <laughs> the way you should do it, but I mean, what better way to find out to just do it. So as Ria said, we tried for the first time to rig our Jenniker and we don't really know what to do with it. We anchored in the South Bay just in front of the harbor in Peniscola, in about 1.8 meters of water. No problem for Koru. We were tired from learning the ropes and fiddling around with the Jenniker, so we took it easy and ended the day with a home-cooked meal and some card games, which of course, I won all the time. <laughs> you look like like Marge Simpson with black hair. <laughs> and I had a crazy dream. I I dreamt that we flew back to Switzerland and then we were tired and we just went straight in and to bed and when I woke up I, I realized that we rented out the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you woke up next to the ten new tenants or what? No, they were not home yet, but I was like, shit. <laughs> nice, nice. We're back in the harbor in St. Carl's and um, yesterday we uploaded our first video, our first episode of the Metsy Madness Saga. 
and we received so much love and so much positive feedback. We just want to say thank you so much for this. Uh, it means a lot to us. We put a lot of work in it, and um, we're really looking forward to do these things now. It's it's just amazing. I mean, I always liked video editing. I always liked telling stories, but this is a whole new level. And thank you very much. Thanks for the love. We really appreciate it. And we would also appreciate if you head over to YouTube, um, find our channel Sailing Koru and subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell so you get notified whenever we upload a new video thank you so much for your love guys peace I'm drilling uh, holes in our dinghy so uh, we're gonna fix um, this fitting here in order to have uh, like a rigging point for the devits, um, in order to like uh, lift the dinghy a little bit further up, so it doesn't like dangle around all the time when we're in a in a rougher sea state. And of course, <laughs> I'm going to use duct tape for it. Again, I love this stuff. So uh, it's going to be uh, watertight again, of course. We need another. Um, do you see this here? Yeah. Ring. So we need another ring like this, but further down, so we're able to actually move the whole dinghy further up, you know. So it, uh, so it, uh, you know, sits on here, and we can like pull it all the way up. Um. The oil change was due as well. A very long time ago, back in Switzerland, I started an apprenticeship as a car mechanic. I was always into engines and all sorts of technical gadgets, and I'm glad these boat engines are fairly simple to maintain and to understand. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Our former sailing instructor Mark would be so proud of me right now. Getting coral ready for a voyage means a lot of cleaning, provisioning, route planning and fixing all the small things that broke on the last voyage. And of course, filling our tanks with fresh water, which in some arenas means water treatment. Um, I just fill up our water tanks okay. and um, I bought this water, aqua clean, water cleaner. So we need about 150 liters of water in here. So I just put in one and a half grams as soon as this one opens up. And uh, then fill it up with the water and do the same on port side. And then we're all good. I mean, this, this aqua cleaner is like for 10,000 liters of water. And uh, it's supposed to get the water drinkable for like six months. Rhea filled the water tanks and we're basically good to go. Now, just now she uh, went to uh, the supermarket to get some more stuff she thought we need. And then we're uh, good to go. The weather up until now it's looking okay um, on our way to Tarragona, but could change. It's spring here in the Mediterranean uh, and it's just, you, you can't really predict any weather. Let's just hope for the best and uh, we're gonna hug the coast a little bit so we're not like drifting off too far. So we should be fine, I guess. <laughs> Let's, uh, I mean, sooner or later we have to uh, just go out and even in foul weather. It's about uh, 80, between 70 and 80 nautical miles up there, so will take us all day. We're gonna leave at uh, five o'clock in the morning, sail in the dark for another like maybe two hours or one and a half hours before the sun start coming up. So um, yeah, that's gonna be interesting though. We never did a night sail before on Koru, so another first, I'd say. Good morning. <laughs> it's an early one and we, <laughs> we look funny. 
at least I do, with my <laughs> headlamps and everything. But it's it's really warm because I put on all my clothes and it's so nice and quiet. Yeah. And the stars look just beautiful. We uh, we actually thought we're gonna you know we're gonna encounter some 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 rougher weather or some more wind at least and uh, it's really calm <laughs> it's right really now cold. yeah so we're probably gonna motor for a while well, well we'll see how it is when we get out of the delta yeah and that's then, what uh, i mean yeah. <laughs> maybe it then it starts to um with yeah. big waves so yeah. you don't yeah. know yeah. Yeah. we'll see we'll see hopefully not it was our first time sailing at night, and I have to say, it is something. People were telling us that it is special, but that peaceful bit of time between dark and bright, when the night starts turning deep blue and eventually the sun is dying the water golden, we were not prepared for so much beauty. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So uh, just before the sun came up or comes up, still not here, we hoisted the sails and uh, we're on a lovely downwind course doing five knots. And uh, because it's spring here in the Met Sea, um, is it? It is. Well, it doesn't feel like spring. <laughs> But since it's um, spring and the Mad Sea, the winds are completely uh, confused. We're just heading a little bit off course now, but not too bad because we're going to cut port afterwards. So, no big deal. I think we're pretty good on the, on the way. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. We'll see at noon um, how um, far we got, and if we didn't get far enough, we're gonna um, kick on the engines and motor a little bit more. But we really don't hope that we have to do that. All right. I have everything I need. I have this little hot pillow, and I have my book, and I have the ocean. And I can smell the pastas brutzling inside. <laughs> For the first time ever, we flew our drone off the boat, under engine and super calm seas. I'm pretty sure some of you guys have flown drones off a moving boat, maybe even under sail. I have to say, I have mucho respect for all of you. I find it extremely hard to catch that bloody thing in mid-flight. If any of you have some tips for us, they're very much appreciated. Tarragona lies approximately 50 nautical miles south of Barcelona. It offers a lot of history and a really nice harbor. We docked Coru cowboy style and went exploring. Welcome to Tarragona, people. We just docked in <laughs> like what felt like 18 knots of crosswind. <laughs> Maybe it was 12 or 14. Um, yeah. And it was, it was tiny in the space. It yeah, it was tiny. a tiny space. The approach was like. We came in with the swell, so it was a little cowboy, but we managed to dock and uh, now we're going to go and uh, explore Tarragona. Yeah. That already looks pretty nice yeah, here. Yeah, it does. It reminds me of Valencia. I think this is the, the fish market thingy. Thing. Costa? Check it out. Watch it out. 
Yeah. Well, we have to go there. And... <laughs> One, two, three. Listen. Why am I not surprised to see the Qatari flag on this boat? <laughs> The western part of Tarraco is the fisherman's village, El Serrayo, and was built in the mid-19th century, and up to this moment the place to go for seafood. Tarragona has a lot of Roman history to offer. Old and new is beautifully combined, and the amphitheater is worth a visit. If you're into VR and AR, you can even take a virtual tour. Pretty cool. How cool is it to have a drone so we can see what's inside of this fort we can see from the outside. <laughs> We're uh, on top of a hill. Everything here in Tarragona is uh, like uphill and downhill. And we're on a little hill right next to a fort. And it's really beautiful how um, all these like old buildings and new buildings are fit into each other. It's it's really nice, and uh, we have an absolutely fantastic view from up here. Let me show you. That's the fort. There's a lot of old uh, stuff, history, ruins, and. Uh, old buildings here in Tarragona, so we're going to explore a little bit more. Tarragona has a really pretty old town, and in some ways reminds us of our hometown Zurich, back in Switzerland. We made our way up the hill on cobblestone streets and past beautifully restored buildings and a Romanesque cathedral from the 11th century. We did not expect Tarragona to have so much to offer, and we're glad we threw in a stop in this beautiful town. That you're a good man, you're a good man, a real good man. When the wind blows and the windows are closing, you let the world know what it's been, has been. There's no These videos are made with love and are dedicated to everyone who is not yet ready to cut the lines and sail off into the sunset. To everyone who seeks adventures and dreams of pure freedom and endless summers. To all of you free spirits and wandering souls. See you out there. <laughs>